Okay, let's move along to lesson number six. Now, if you like needles and pointers, especially the ADF, that's the Automatic Direction Finder, you'll love this lesson and love teaching these concepts. You'll learn how to follow and understand all the needles to help you navigate. Fortunately, GPS navigation is much easier to understand, and the FAA lets you fly with one of those as well. It's now time to join our instructor in the classroom and get started. Hi, it's Rob Bremer again. This is Lesson 6, En Route Flight and Navigation. When you become an authorized flight instructor, one of the tasks you'll have to do is sign off students for their cross-country flight. At that time, you have to be 100% sure the student can complete the cross-country flight safely. And one part of doing this flight well requires your student to understand the principles of en route flight. So that's where you come in. It's your job to teach it, which means you have to understand this subject really well. This lesson covers the following topics. En route flight, the wind triangle, the flight computer or the, the CX2, off course correction, the automatic direction finder, the VOR, the VOT or VOR test, the VORTAC, radio magnetic indicators or RMI, distance measuring equipment or DME. Okay, we're going to begin with en route flight. When it becomes necessary to divert to an alternate airport, select the most suitable alternate Estimate the magnetic course to the alternate and turn to the approximate heading to establish this course immediately. After becoming established on the new course, you want to apply the new wind correction and compute the actual distance, estimated time, and fuel required. Next up, we're going to cover aeronautical charts. Aeronautical charts are drawn using the geographic North Pole as the North reference. However, a magnetic compass points to the magnetic North Pole, which is not located at the geographic pole. The compass error caused by the angular difference between true north and magnetic north is called magnetic variation. Variation changes with the location on the Earth, but it's the same on all headings within a given location. Aeronautical charts show the variation error with an isogonic line. Here's an isogonic line right here. Isogonic lines run diagonally and irregularly across the charts. Each isogonic line is labeled with the variation error that runs along it and the pilot must apply the correction for this error to relate the magnetic course to the true course. Here we have 5 degrees west. Westerly variation must be added to the true course or true heading to get the magnetic course or heading. Easterly variation, on the other hand, must be subtracted from the true course or true heading to get magnetic course or magnetic heading. To determine the true heading required to fly a desired true course, well, you have to crab the airplane into the wind, and this airplane right here you can see is crabbing into the wind. If the wind is from the left, you must subtract the wind correction angle. If the wind is from the right, you must add the correction. For an example, let's take a look at this table. Now, here we've got a course heading formula, and we've got two columns, course and heading. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and show how you can get from any one of these to another. Let's say you're starting with true course. To go from true course to true heading, apply plus or minus wind correction angle. To get from true course to magnetic course, you apply plus or minus the variation. To get from magnetic course to magnetic heading, you apply plus or minus wind correction angle. To get from magnetic course to compass course, you apply plus or minus deviation. And finally, to get from compass course to compass heading, you would apply plus or minus wind correction angle to get your compass course. 